Good evening, my fellow scientists. It is Monday, July 30th, 2018, and I want to update you all on the progress in the all-iron battery. This week has been spent expanding the single cell to a battery or array of cells. We have an open cell potential of 3 volts now, which is not terrible compared to our 0.5 volts from each cell. And uh, we have started to do a full-length discharge test, so I'll give you the details on that. First of all, a single cell is an iron anode. Iron metal is going to oxidize. And at the cathode, we have iron salt or iron 3 sulfate that is going to be reduced to iron 2 sulfate. That means that the whole battery uses nothing but iron. It can be mixed up and still retain its ability to be charged. Of course, that does discharge the battery if you mix it up. Between the anode and the cathode is a separator. You can use a lot of things for that. We've used nafion soaked paper, nafion membranes. And we've centered now on making a sort of user accessible membrane out of sodium polyacrylate. So that's known as a highly or supersorbent polymer. It's sometimes found in diapers to help absorb liquids. And it's, it's cheap, safe, and you can, you can buy it from Amazon in pure form if you like. We've soaked that into paper, driven off all the water using a oven and a fan. And then from there, we use that folded up to make a battery membrane. You put the iron inside the little membrane pouch and then saturate the rest of the whole cell with an iron sulfate solution. So at the iron side, there's also iron 2 sulfate. And at the iron 3, the cathode side, there's iron 3 sulfate. The whole thing gets put into a pouch with a graphite foil as the current collector. Put that all together, we get a cell. And we can line up the cells in series to make a higher voltage battery. This battery has been discharging now for a few hours. We're getting decent performance. You can see that it does in fact light an LED and you can kind of get a sense for, for the overall setup. Uh, we're tracking the voltage and current as we discharge, so we should get a pretty decent view of the actual capacity of this battery at full discharge. One of the things I'm interested in trying is to rig up a what's called a jewel thief circuit with this cell. Because the cell is a fairly low voltage cell, it could be interested in to integrate a circuit that steps the voltage up and kind of soaks a little bit more of the energy out of that cell uh, than would be possible with just a, a simple resistive circuit or an LED. So we'll, we'll look into that, but uh, Nico's been working hard building this array. Uh, we've settled on the six cell array, he has the capacity perhaps to build as many as 12 cells, but these are our best six. And uh, we'll, we'll keep expanding perhaps toward the, these last few weeks of the summer and start compiling our results for the full scale assembly video and the assembly publication that's going to have all these careful instructions. So th thank you all for watching. Thank you to Nico for working so hard on this. Thanks especially to our crowdfunding supporters who made this summer research possible. You can look forward in the next two weeks to a battery assembly video and some quotes on the actual performance of this final cell array or battery next week right here in the Allen Lab.